Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Pyre Community Right Night, which means of course some good old-fashioned multiplayer Pyre, featuring first and foremost none other than the members of the Right Club Discord server, the place for all things multiplayer Pyre, and if you're interested in getting more involved in multiplayer Pyre, then look no further. Because you can join said Discord server by clicking on that link right there. But those of you in chat, you are not off the hook. No, no, no. Because you see the red circle with the white L below chat. You click on that and you'll find all the various requests you can make today, including things ranging from selecting players, exiles, masteries, songs, arenas, even Titan Stars are all fair game. So, without further ado, let's hop into versus mode. We'll set ourselves back to our defaults, but... Otherwise, should be good to go here. Let me just jump into Discord. And it appears we might already have a couple people who are primed and ready to go. Hello, how's it going? Good. It's going good. I, uh. Oh! Ooh, someone got all, um, robotty. Super robotty. But, uh,. I take it the fact that the two of you are already in Discord to mean that you're ready to get started? Mm, sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, let me get uh, Steam Friends up here. That's not Steam Friends. That's... Let me open Steam right away. Let's see. Where are you guys? I'm opening Steam. Not seeing Mikos either, though. Hmm. Strange. Steam? Work with me here. Come on, Steam. Okay, now I see Mikos. That's one. There's Camilo. Okay. There we go. Invites should be on their way. And let us know, chat, if there is anything you would like to see for our first match of the day. Of course, could always give these two a little bit of time to warm up before we start throwing anything crazy at them, but that is ultimately up to you. Welcome. Yakety Lilac. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> That's a clever name. Took me a minute there. <laughs> oh. We're just getting started with some multiplayer pyre. There we go. Okay, and Camilo, are you gonna go keyboard mouse today? Or well, ideally? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see, last yeah, week, uh, I did, yeah. Last week, Steam Remote Play did not cooperate with us very well. Hopefully we'll have better luck this time around. Let's hope. Okay. So let's see. Uh, what triumvirates would you two like to use? Um, good with the fate. With the fate? Yep. Okay. Uh, true night wings for me, please. True night wings. Okay. okay. Let's see. The cost. And then. True night wings. Okay. There we go. Alright, uh, not seeing any requests from chat right now, so it looks like people are feeling pretty merciful right now. So I guess it'll be up to you guys. Well, let's get started. Hear me, 
exiles. You stand upon the cairn of Aub. Each of you seeks to be free from this forsaken land. Cling to whatever shred of hope you have. The fate stand ready. True Nightwings stand prepared. All right, good. First test. Can people control stuff? At least on the squad selection screen, Camilo able to go with the Luminous Idol on a harp. Looks like no issues on the Casa's end on the squad selection screen either, he says as he knocks on wood. What's up, Anor? How's it going? How is everybody? We're just getting started with our first match here. Camilo and now Mikos going with the extra presence on Snadra. And a quick throwing Bertrude is the second choice for Camilo. What's up, Wisty? How are you? Quick throwing stowaway on the other end. The first thing, I have a question. How does this affect the sapling? How does thorns not affect saps? Is it the how far away you can place your sapling, maybe? Don't- I, I'm not sure, but that's my guess. Okay, I can- uh... Max range you can place the sapling. Okay, yeah. Alright, well, Camilo will take it. How long did it take in total to release the to make the video that I was uh, that I sent out yesterday? Uh, about ten hours, give or take, over the course of two days. One of which was a work day. Both of which were days in which I streamed. So uh, you can put you can start doing some of the mental math there, and you can realize that does not leave a lot of other time to do other things. <laughs> was difficult, but we got it out. And uh, Camilo is getting us started with a 25 damage throw from his crone. Not often you see 25 damage on those crones, but at the very beginning of the match, when people have the same amount of higher life, does often end up being just at that moment, and then Camilo falling up with a 13 damage throw from his sap. That's another crone throw, and those throws are unblockable, so it is very hard to stop them. They aren't quite as quick as, say, a savage throw is, even with the quick throwing talent. Well, a quick throwing savage is still quicker than a quick throwing uh, crone. The crones usually come with that extra damage and that unblockable aspect. Oh, and Pamitha sacrificed a teammate. Not sure it really helped her at the end of the day, though. Bertrude for an opening. Just needs a window to get off that throw, and that's all the time that Camilo needed. And now, one more score, potentially all that he'll need to finish this match. Won't come from Pamitha, though, at least not on that occasion. But we have seen a lot coming from Bertrude. She's stopped this time, though. Toss. with Camilo, switches into the sap, but the sap is banished, but Camilo wins the orb back right next to Mikasa's fire, oh, and that shoulder smash from Snadra was huge. The tiny hitbox of the fire. <laughs> the hitbox does get smaller as you lose pyre life. Oh my goodness, Bertrude banishes everyone, but where is the orb? Oh, and somehow, Pamitha seemed to hard push all the defenders out of the way, but still couldn't get the orb in, and so now it's Makos who's the one scoring. Could the comeback be on here? That's the Ninja Savage Strats. Nearly got that throw off, but it was intercepted that time. Oh, an opportunity here for Snadra. 
Oh, but Makos tries to get the stowaway back instead, and oh, might have been better served just settling with Snadra. Will that come back to bite him? It is the stowaway, it is the ninja strats. Oh, but Camilo is right there to intercept, but after banishing Bertrude, Mikos is back at it here. Don't write him off just yet. Oh, and sneaky sap of all things. But Mikos is unfazed. Nearly made it through there with Barker. Snadra returns. Everyone back here now for Mikos. Camilo. Nearly had it just then with Pamatha, but the shoulder smash once again coming up clutch. Take that, Barker. Gertrude has been key in this match, so it is only fitting that she'll get the winning score. GG. Well played, you two. Thus end this night's proceedings. All right. And with that, let's head on back. And let us know, chat, if there is anything we would like to see for the next one. We let them take whatever they wanted on that one. We can, of course, always choose to do that if we'd like, but there is room for our own, uh... Oh, there we go. It's Camilo, of all people. <laughs> says enough of this all choosing thing customize off it is so randomized exiles masteries and talismans in that case won't even get to see what those things are in advance just going to get thrown straight into the action now we could still do a song could still do an arena if either of those things are of interest but otherwise we've just about everything else accounted for here Not seeing anything else though, so I think we'll just run with this. And we will see what the players end up with. The lava place. The fate it is not. It is the pit of Malith. And fittingly, Camilo has two crones, along with a worm, from a cause that is a savage, a harp, and an imp. It is Camilo O, who was charging up a throw, but Momentum took him in for a plunge instead. And with no prayer beads, it means he's Bertrudeless. Ooh, big harp banishment there from Macos. Applying some pressure with Pamatha. The orb is tantalizingly close to Camilo's pyre, but Camilo does get it back. Pamatha. Almer. <laughs> and uh, Makos checks to see if he has the Savage Salute. Does not, though. No ninjing this time around. Mooncrest on Almer, I think that was? Yeah. Everyone down. Oh, and that is, uh, that is a can singularity on, I believe, Mikos's messenger room, if I'm not mistaken. One of Mikasa's exiles, pretty sure it was Messenger in. Oh, and look at that snipe! 17 damage on that throw from Almer. And Pamatha, just gonna banish everybody, and that's exactly what she does! But now, no Pamatha in this round for Mikas. In fact, no anybody right now. So time for Camilo. Oh, with a little bit of bonus value there. 30 damage and also 15 leech coming from the talisman. Net 45 point score. That is hard to top, but what? The cost. Get back to it here. Once again with Pamatha. But once again, she's out in this round. When a Valiant Return brings back Lady River, and with C's chance, and no one to stop her. Oh. oh, and once again, though, Camilo was looking for the throw. Instead, Momentum brought him in for the plunge, so no Lady River in this round. 
But with that extra damage, Mikos now down to just 20 Pyre Life and one score potentially. All that Camilo needs here, barring an unexpected right light, although we've seen enough talismans that I'm not sure that's going to be the case. But with no one back defensively, opportunity for Mikos to throw in. And we're looking at what is... Well, unfortunately for Makos, after what were some partial damage throws, even after that plunge, probably still needs two scores here. I don't think Makos has any way to get more than 20 damage per score. But Camilo gets a very quick prone throw, and fortunately for Makos, it was so quick that it did not deal enough damage to wipe out all of his pyre life. But next score, Makos may not be so lucky. Elusive from Camilo, but not elusive enough. Here comes Mikos. And Tamitha has been key. A little sidestep around the defender, and it's the throw, ultimately, that does the job. And honestly, uh, it doesn't make that much of a difference what type of damage it is or how much damage it is. Mikos just needed one damage, because now he is in range with just one score. But it won't matter here, because Camilo jumps in to take the win. A sudden death match. GG. The right is ended. Well played, you two. That's true, and if you if you consider the leech from that crone score, and that alone was the difference maker. The next right. That's a solid setup, even with customize off. All right, well. Like you. We'll turn back on Customize, unless of course we want to turn it back off. Let us know if anyone would like to see that, or anything else for that matter, setup-wise. Somebody choose her. Somebody choose Arena. Not immediately seeing anything though. So maybe we'll go back to leaving this one up to the players. Somebody, uh, Core, choose Arvina. Oh! I forgot Core's request. My bad. Hold on. Except that was a boat. I, I recognize that sound. That was going to be a boat. I would just like to acknowledge that. Thank you for saving us from that. <laughs> what do you mean? Save us. Okay, it was Nest of Triesta, is what Kor requested. Imagine ignoring Kor, wow. The Page versus the True Nightwings. Well I still wanna see how far can I... Who get shall this? conduct the rites? We'll have to see. Camilo going back to it with the extra range on the sapling placement for Volfred. Now Luminous Idol on Pamatha for Macos. goes for a speedy messenger imp. Bertrude. Now a prayer beads Bertrude for Macos. Last choice will be a power casting headwind on Camilo's side.
lastly, an exploding deluge for Macaws. There is that sapling. I don't think it matters too much whether you have the talisman. I think you could still get enough range to throw in the middle there. Uh, that was an interesting throw. Uh, Camilo Sap got bumped from a harp push. And it was a, a short range quick throw, but even with that bump, Camilo was still able to hit the target. Ooh, but now Macaw's defenseless. It's a time for Camilo, although rushed that throw a little bit. Momentum might have been taking him in. Might have been trying to avoid accidentally plunging. But did have to cut the damage a little bit short there. We'll have to see if that makes a difference in the long term. Here is Headwind again. This time, though. Oh, still cuts it slightly short. 19 damage on that occasion. Those are the big imploding saplings. I suppose maybe that's the key value that Camilo was looking for from the extra range on the sapling placements. That also means extra range on the exploding saplings. But there's the heart push. Macos has had success with that strat thus far today. There goes Headwind. Back to Volfred. Macaws picks up the scraps here, but then gets knocked into the lava. In fact, that's actually beneficial. It means that Bertrand came back more quickly, although Camilo is still able to sneak through there. The 20 damage plunge from Headwind, but now Headwind is gone in this round. Amatha. Oh, doesn't have anyone to switch with, although there's no one on the other end. It did activate the numbing gust, slowing. But not stopping, Macos. There's the switch Macos was looking for, but Deluge does go down. Oh, big power cast from Hedwin. Here he is. Still has it. Eventually, <laughs> settles for a 13 damage throw. Kept us guessing, though. Uh, Macos gets Pam at the back. Has the speed. I, I cannot move now. Oh, yeah. Oh, what? Well, yeah, what? Well, now it looks like you're fine. Oh, with no one back defensively. Time for, for Camilo to throw it in for the win. The scribes themselves stood by their side. Third game. GG. The right is done. All right, well played, you two. Now let's head on back. Until the stars align. And obviously. Since, I mean, sure, Core had that Nest of Trieste request, but it denied us the opportunity of a boat right. Obviously, that means we need to hard set Hulk of Ores for this next match, right? I mean, that's the only way to do it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, did, did, did I hear something? We're gonna have fun. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, uh, Core. Core, you don't need to request boat. We were already gonna do it. <laughs> you don't. You don't need to do that, Core. Save your litcoin, <laughs> Wisty. I mean, I I appreciate the gesture, but but we. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'll. Yeah. No. Not not bot. Right. Boat. Yeah. I got you. Boat. Right. I mean, we were we were gonna do it. I mean, I I appreciate the enthusiasm. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> the fate shall confront the true night <laughs> Welcome. Okay. Who shall conduct the rites? Alright, well obviously we are on the boat now. 
let's see how the players choose to adapt to this map. As it'll be an extra throwing damage Gilman in the first spot for Camilo. And Makos is also going Gilman, but with a ring. Or the ring, I think so. And with the fairy spirit on Jotariel and the rings, assuming that Makos takes another one on one of the two remaining characters, that means there could be an awful lot of the infinite stamina moments in this match. Ooh, bless you. Thank you. It's gonna be a demon, I saw you. It's gonna be a demon with the ring. I'm pretty sure I can jump the whole map with this. Well, Camilo will go Prayer Beads Rookie. Was expecting to see a demon on Mikasa's side. As for whether that was the plan, we may never know. Stop. Wise decision. <laughs> Maybe Mikasa was planning a sap all along. Throw us off. Or maybe it was going to be a demon. But adapted. After hearing. Oh, and true. Manly. That last exile is gonna have a ring. So it is a ring sap, which is not something we see very often. But it is an intriguing thought. There is the moon drop as well. As we were saying, multiple sources of infinite stamina in this match. <laughs> and uh, everyone is hopping around, but <laughs> took a little while to find the orb, it seemed. There's another moon drop. Oh, Camilo getting a little bit of extra air time on his Kerr, which you don't see that often on the boat. You don't see Kerrs very often on the boat in general, I suppose. Somehow, Macos found a way through there. It did not look like there was much room. It didn't stop Gilman. Rookie blocked. Takes out one of the defenders, though. Calls has it back. Explodes, taking out two of the defenders. There's the moon drop that Camilo gets, but the orb. Macos nearly throws in, but it's off the mark. Rookie loops around. Blocked. Banishes the defender, only to go into the sapling. Macos recovers. Manly returns just in time to slow Camilo. Jody applying a lot of pressure here. But she does go down. And now a war of the worms. Did I miss? Well, Camilo does get the throw off here, and remember, did take the extra throwing damage, so 23 on that occasion. There is still a moon draw, which neither player has opted to take yet, for what it's worth. Oh, and Macos just barely dodges that cast. Now Macos takes the moon drop, has that infinite stamina, and uses it to plunge in for 15. Now means no Gilman, but doesn't matter to Macos. Macos will plunge for 15 with the other worm. Alas for 
And Fairy Spirit activates. Jody picks up the Moon Drop, only to immediately be banished. So unable to capitalize on that infinite stamina. Now Jody again. Back to Rookie. Trying to find a way through. Oh, and ups for the throw. Good for 11. Because Blocked. Camila with it back now, and with Fairy Spirit. Gets the Moon Drop. Gets a speedy Jody. But she is stopped short of the pyre. Now Deluge for Mikasa. Ooh, extra little bit of air time from the boat. Ruki. Just quick enough to avoid banishment, so he'll plunge for 20. Does mean that Jody at least would have enough damage, except that I think Makos has rekindling on Manly. There is there's a couple of moon drops actually. Camilo took one and plunged there, and although Makos is at six pyre life, as I was just saying, do expect to see a second life bar. Oh, and it is Makos getting the next score, plunging for 15 there, and that means that technically, Makos is in range here if it were to be a full damage manly score. But no rekindling, actually. Oh! No second life bar. So that's all the damage that Camilo needed. GG. Thus end this GG. night's proceedings. Does anybody else want to help them? Is anybody interested? It sounds like uh, Camilo is volunteering to swap Until out. If anyone would like to hop in, right. I think I'm tormented uh, my cousin. Wisty says, able to jump in here. So. Uh, do you want to swap out right now, or do you want to go one more match before we make the transition? Let's do one more. Okay, sure. That way we give Wisty a little bit of time as well. Okay, so we'll do one more match now between Camilo and Mikos, and then we'll get Wisty in for Camilo. So let us know, chat, if there is anything we would like to see between these two, because this may be our last chance to make it happen today. Otherwise, of course, could always just leave it up to the players. That is always an option. Though, yeah, not immediately seeing any requests, so I think we will keep this one simple, straightforward, up to the players. In a simple, straightforward arena, as well. Welcome. <laughs> Who shall conduct the rites? So what do the players do with this relatively blank slate? That's a good question. Camila will go Nutrition Stick on Volfred. For Macos, oh, sorry. <laughs> For Macos, it's back to a Ninja Stowaway. Keeping it simple with a web lanthorn Tizo. Now exploding deluge on Mikasa's side. Oh, 
Titan Tooth on Rookie. Is that the first time we've seen Titan Tooth today? Because if so, then I'm surprised it took us this long for someone to break it out. Messenger. And Web Lanthorn Imp in the last spot for McCullough. Still away. Going the ninja route, but her throw is intercepted. Luki on the counterattack, able to capitalize here, plunging in for 20. And he is back. Courtesy of, I believe, the prayer beads. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that's what Camilo took. Oh, the mastery, the built in prayer beads. The prayer beads at home. So no problem plunging here. But now it is the stowaway, answering with a 20 damage throw. Rookie slowly saunters forward, makes his move only to, uh, well, Titan Tooth stun, so he might not have made it in, but he did create a window of opportunity. But Macos has recovered and is back to ninjaing with the stowaway. That is that Titan Tooth once again, causing a little bit of trouble here. Hasn't yet led to, or at least not directly to a score, but you can see the idea there. But the cost, able to capitalize on the counter. Stowaway again here. Deluge on the other side, clears out a little bit of space, but Camilo has it back. And the cost, hesitant with that Titan Tooth, knows that threat just barely able to snuff it out. But Rookie, back at it here. Exactly, and it's tough, because if you jump in to block him, he's going to stun you. But if you let him go, then he might score like that. Deluge. Now Stowaway. But she stopped. Imp for an imp. Makes the whole world blind, and apparently that means the stowaway throws it in for 20. Stowaway. Hey. An aggressive teleportation there from the salute. Stowaway back at it here. Oh, and almost had an angle there, but Camilo recovered in time with the sap to cut off that angle. Milo, oh, with the nutrition stick, <laughs> blinks straight in. But there is the stowaway answering quickly, and suddenly we have ourselves what might be a sudden death match. Does Camilo have rekindling? Because last time I thought Mikos did, and was caught by surprise when that was not the case. Is that going to be the same story for Camilo here? Rookie did get the stun from Titan Tooth, but wasn't a problem. This time around, and oh, that could have been the deciding score. But Camilo able to stop it. And now in with Rookie to take the win. GG. A victory so narrowly achieved and thus more glorious. Well played, you two. The ceremony is complete. All right. Well, let's head on back. Until okay. the stars align. Yeah, and if it still works for Wisty and for Camilo, perhaps we switch out Camilo here and get Wisty in. Does that still work on your end, Wisty? Hopefully. There he is. He's muted though. Oh, okay. Hello. There we go. How's it going, Wisty? I'm good. Good to see ya. Alright, let me get you an invite. Let's see. Here you are. 
Okay, invite should be on its way. And now if you two could just double check who's player one and who's player two, because now that I believe we have two controller players, who knows what remote play is going to do now. Big chaos is coming. <laughs> You're right. Chaos is the only thing we know for certain. Like I'm still player two. Okay, awesome. And uh, which triumvirate would you like to be? Was the... Oh wait, hold on. Do I? I have. Okay. I'm, well, I'm. I am player. Nine. I may have been introducing some additional chaos into the equation because I did not realize I had my controller plugged in this entire time. So, oops. Um, that that might have messed with Wisty a little bit. Apparently, it was not an issue for Macos earlier. Presumably, that means Wisty is player one. Or player one was me all along. The truth. The, the <laughs> unraveling truth. <laughs> Camilo was just a lie. It's all a part of your imagination. <laughs> Are you even real? <laughs> Are you even real? Is anything real? Oh, gosh. Oh, man. All right. Well, uh, Wisty, would you like to be the fate, or do you want to switch to someone else? I'll be Chastity. Chastity? Okay. Oh, I don't think I have, like... Okay. Any. Let me mess around with remote play a little bit here. Let's see. Uh, what is the... This is the hot key that I need. This is the menu that I need. Let's try that. How about now? I just got a rumble. I'm gonna, yep, we're good. Okay, nice. Perfect, let me just, oh, okay. Oh, the stream is actually frozen. I'm realizing because you guys like that. Oh, don't wow. see it, but Wisty has changed to the, the correct triumvirate. Just do a little, uh, let's see. Oh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and that usually does it. Okay, should be good now. So let us know, chat, if there is anything we would like to see between Wisty and Mikos. Mikos, of course, has been going for a little while now, but Wisty is uh, doing the first few matches of the day, so, well, the first match of the day for her, so... Let us know if uh, you'd like to take it easy for now, or if we are going straight into chaos. Ultimately, that choice is yours. And uh, Camilo is coming back in with another customized off request, so that answers that question. Back to the chaos we go. Randomized Exiles Mastery's Talismans. All right, could still do arena, could still do song, but otherwise, we have a, just about everything accounted for Didn't with that we request. we have uh, four requests for the boat arena? <laughs> Technically speaking, <laughs> depending on how you interpret the series of boat requests, you could make the case that we have several boat requests in the queue. <laughs> Depends how you want to interpret those. <laughs> Were those all just looking for a single boat? Or are we actually looking to go with a series of boat matches? I mean, we could do one more boat. This will be a, a collective boat from, uh, what was it? Wisty and Nor and uh, at least one other person probably who made that request, I think. For them laughs and giggles. All right, let's do it. The Chastity versus the True Nightwings. All right, Kerr, Worm, and I think Nomad 
on Wistie's side, Crone, Harp, and Kerr on Mikasa's side. Wisty attacking, blocked, but comes back quickly, and we see has the Sacred Bond, but it is Mikasa getting it started with a quick little 5 damage Harp throw. Tamitha again here, this time goes the plunging route. That means this one's good for 20. And no prayer beads on her, so she's gone in this round. Glendal, oh, has Luminous Idol, that's not bad. And uh, takes out all the defenders. So he's able to plunge here for 20. We know he doesn't have prayer beads because he has that Luminous Idol. Winged Fury on Tamitha. Okay, so we know she's not all right. That's first on the right side, right? So she's not 100% left side. We know that much as Wisty plunges here for 20 with Rookie. No prayer beads and no prayer beads at home for him. Titan Tooth? Wait, was that on... Was that on Tamitha? Oh, goodness. That is very potent. Mikos has made a very important discovery. After that plunge, Tamitha will not be in for this round, but you can imagine Mikos will be looking to go back to that combo very soon. Wisty sneaks past. Able to plunge for 15. Tamitha makes her return. She is quickly banished, though. And Wisty is able to quickly plunge. And drops a cost down to 25. Now, of course, you never know when there might be an unexpected right light rekindling as uh, Forfrit goes flying back there. But uh, hard to say if uh, anything is going to be a definitive score unless we know all of the talismans and can confirm that there is no right light at play. Delbert. Now Vorfrit from Mikos. Goes for the throw, gets it off just in time before getting banished. And that's good for 15. That means probably a two-score game for either player. Depending a little bit on if we see partial damage throws, but Mikos, oh, had room for the plunge. Had time for it, but went for the throw instead and perhaps got a little too greedy with it. Could not get it off in time. Has uh, some interesting airtime on the boat there. And this exchange happening right in front of Wistie's pyre, which is probably not the place Wistie would like for it to be happening. Wistie now recovering and going on the attack. Returning the favor. Getting all this action right in front of Mikasa's pyre. And plunging for 20 and now presumably... One hit would be all that Wisty needs, unless there is an unexpected right light, but we've seen enough of Mikasa's talismans that that is not likely to be the case, as Mikasa throws in for 20, and at this point, it is now possible for Mikasa to finish it with one score as well. And there it is! GG. GG. The true Nightwings prevail. Well played. Although their adversaries put up quite an effort, the right is complete. All right, well, let's head on back. Until the next right. And let us know, chat, if there's anything we'd like to see for the next one. Otherwise, if not, at the very least, we will turn Customize back on. And we'll reset the arena. That was a, a collective boat request from everyone who still had a boat request out there. course if we don't have anything in particular in mind except we do we'll go back to the book this time let us know if there's anything we'd like to see in terms of song or team composition forbidden knowledge okay I'm sensing a little bit of a theme here there's just one notable piece that is missing Ooh. 
Okay. Exile request for at least two crones from Camilo. At least two crones. Did you do an exile request, Core? I see Camilo's. Did you just copy paste an attempt at the response without actually redeeming it, Core? Because <laughs> I don't think anyone has ever done that before. But for what it's worth, on my end, it does not look the same. <laughs> <laughs> I you think, copied the text. It's, it's an actual. It's an actual request. <laughs> he copied it's the text to make request, it look like he made a suggestion. request, <laughs> but the the font color is different for me. <laughs> so, yeah, I, uh, I I was able to tell the difference. Oh, there's there's a a suggestion that one of the characters is Snadra. There is an actual official request for at least two crones. So basically the question is, is the third exile Snadra? Ultimately that's up to you. Also technically it was a request for crowns. So, you know, interpret that however you will. Uh, I, this. <laughs> I gave you the benefit of the doubt. Kor was not so forgiving. The chastity shall take on the true night wings. Well, I mean, if you want to be a literalist, you could say, all right, if it's a request for at least two crowns, who are the two most regal and royal of, uh, of exiles? But I don't think that was the idea. I don't it... think so. <laughs> yeah. So assuming the request is actually at least two crowns, that means there's one non-crone character that each player can take if they would like. I mean, they can go all crone if they'd like. But Wisty goes harp first. That means remaining two exiles will be crones for Wisty. Sandra. Mm -hmm. And we have Snadra's arena, Snadra's song. And that's why I was saying perhaps we ought to expect a Snadra exiles request and then core almost did it, but not quite. Mikos will oblige, though. I think he did it. it did just, he actually did end up doing it? It just bugged. <laughs> Twitch sometimes does that. <laughs> uh. Well, there is crone number one for Wisty. And we will see all crones from here on out for both players, since both led with a non-crone. It's kind of interesting that neither player wanted to go crone first. They're pretty quick, the crones. Not after the princess. They are afraid of success. <laughs> well, extra plunging damage. Hold on, it's a crone with a cur fang? Something's not adding up here. I think that's a good Now, Prayer Beads on Bertrude is the second crone for Wisty. This will be a crone for Mikos as well. will go for the legendary talisman to cast through barriers. That's not a bad choice on a map like this. There is Wisty's Harp. Tamitha plunging there. She's now out for this round, though. Wisty caught in the corner. Mikos speeding ahead. Thought about plunging, hesitated, and then did it anyway. Perhaps remembered, hey, I have Kerfang. I do get extra damage for doing this. He needed time for reflection. <laughs> yeah. Pondered whether it was what he wanted to do. But it is Wisty now, plunging straight in for 25. 
from the true Nightwing's foe. Oh, and the Titan too. Heading in for a stun. The Koss. Once again, trying to leap in. But blocked three times in a row. And Wisty says, alright, now it's my turn. But with Stubborn Flame active, that reduces Wisty's damage. And huge power cast from Snadra. That leaves just Udmilda back defensively. And the tricky thing about the Crones is they have very low hope. So it takes them quite a long time to come back from Banishment. Oh, but Makos was stunned by the Titan Tooth. So that meant Wisty with a clean line straight in toward the Pyre follows up with another plunge here. But with that Stubborn Flame... Mikos reduces the damage enough to still hold on here, but Wisty back to finish the job, not this time. Mikos still holding on. And now with Wisty defenseless, time for Mikos to throw in for 30. And Mikos is just out of range of being able to finish it with one score. He has the Kerfang though. Oh, but he has the Kerfang, that's right, it is possible. If Mikos plunges with the Kerfang crone, if he remembers which one it is, then that would be enough. Snadra versus Bertrude, and Bertrude is the victor. GG. GG. Such a well conducted victory it was. Well played, you two. The ceremony is complete. All right. Let's head on back. Until the stars align. We're getting a bunch of these sudden death matches. One score either way would be deciding. I mean, as Camilo was saying, with that uh, Kerfang, that technically was sudden death there. Alright, well let's reset, but let us know if there's anything we would like to see for this one. We had our Snadra theme. For the previous one. Well, Crones plus Snadra. Not immediately seeing anything though, so we could always leave it up to the players to take whatever they'd like. So perhaps we'll go that route. Chastity shall mm -hmm. face the true I reset the arena, right? I'm pretty sure I did. I think we just got a random book. I think it's a message from the Desic. <laughs> it was meant to be. Maybe they want to be somewhere again. Is that a Titan Tooth on Tamitha there? I believe that is what Wisty led off with last time, and it was effective. Mikos will go Harp, but will go Luminous Idol instead of Titan Tooth. on Bertrude. Wait, hold on a second. <laughs> Starting to look awfully similar. It's the same lead for Wisty and then went with a crone in the second spot as well. Is Wisty gonna go crone in the third spot and then it is functionally a repeat of the previous match? We'll have to see. Now, granted, Makos is not doing that. Goes with Barker instead, so we will not see double crone on Makos's side.
Core keeping secret Titan Tooth strats? Is that what's happening? Something that the that he told me once about the Titan Tooth interaction with Harps. But I don't know if he will share it. Now, extra aura size. Whoa, aura size for messenger in. the last choice for McCoss. Now begin. Harp versus Harp. And uh, perhaps fittingly, oh, I thought they both went down, but I think McCoss might have used the Harp's loot to switch. Because ultimately it was Manly who went down. He switches in to the curve to set up a 20 damage plunge there. And Barker comes back. But so does Wisty, plunging in here for 20 damage from Tamitha. Cornered and banished. Tamitha for Macos has some time here to throw that one in for 13. The harps collide, but that plays to Wisty's advantage with that Titan Tooth. Sets up that 20 damage plunge. Oh, and... Messenger Imp went on a vanishing spree. Except McCoss was the first one to get the orb. With the assistance of a numbing gust. Through the portal. Doesn't take her that far, but is able to get in. Book is not that big. It drops Macoss down to 30. Now, Macoss does have a sap, but previously we saw Macoss not take any rekindling on said sap, so cannot necessarily take that for granted as a series of banishments take place in front of Macoss's pyre. But Macoss just barely able to fend off at least that attack, but Wisty is relentless here. And yet it is Macoss who is the one scoring, throwing that in for 14. Titan Tooth Stun gives Wisty some time, but Macoss has enough time still to recover, and the Sapling comes to Macoss's rescue. Oh, but the harp push moves those defenders out of the way and lets Wisty in for a 20 damage plunge. Wisty loses Bertrude here. Still has it with Messenger in. Looking to throw. Banishes all of Macoss's exiles. And with no rekindling, Wisty will finish the job. GG. GG. Well played, you two. The right is ended. All right. Well, let's head on back. Until the stars align. And let us know, chat, if there's anything we would like to see for the next one. Otherwise, of course, as always, we can leave it up to the players to take whatever they'd like. And yes, it was a random book. I did remember to reset it. So it was pure coincidence that we got two books in a row.
I'm sorry, what is what is a gladiu? Gladiu? I'm unfamiliar with this term. I think he's trying to call you something. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. <laughs> Grand ceremony. I'm sensing a bit of a pattern here. Oh, it was not a good idea to go around the other way. I was like, oh, Grand Ceremony is one of the last songs that's listed. Except uh, with the modded songs, uh, it takes a little bit longer. Anyways, that's an aside. What does that mean? I just, you know, just went the most inefficient way to select Grand Ceremony. Okay, but Blade of Liu. Liu. And then we do have an Exiles request from Yakety Lilac. The Stowaway. Okay. The Stowaway. No, Wisty, that's not enough vowels. <laughs> You're missing at least five vowels. Of course. <laughs> How do I spell manly, dude? <laughs> oh, Alright, well, looks like we are good to go here. Oh, so let's get started. Oh, and then <laughs> Camilo does, okay, request Manly. So we have a stowaway and we have Manly. The, the third exile is up to you two to choose whatever you would like. Welcome. But we must see a stowaway and we must see a Manly. Specifically Manly. It's a banishing throw, stowaway. And nutrition stick on Manly. I see. Uh, okay, so of course the quick throwing stowaway is very popular. Wisty did not choose to go that route though, instead saved the quick throwing talisman for Manly. Alright. be a quick throwing stowaway from the cost though. As Wisty goes throwing damage on Lady River. I'm in flame. the sap, we have the stowaways, so this last choice, this last exile, it's all up to Macaws here. And chooses a speedy Joe Dario. Okay, so here we go, at the Glade of Liu, it's the stowaway, has the banishing throws, although on that occasion it's more about the damage 
It's 16 for Wisty. Except that throw is short. So McCall's able to recover. Able to ninja. Oh, and does so. To great success here. Throwing in for 18. Stowaway shut off. There is the extra mobility that McCall's is demonstrating with that nutrition stick and throws it in for seven. Jelly down. Manly moving in for Wisty. Side steps and launches, but the throw is intercepted. Jody returns. Stuns at least one of the defenders, but does still end up going down. Now Manly versus Manly. And surprise, surprise, Manly wins. Stowaway is able to sneak in a throw, but it's a quick one. Just seven. Stowaway once again banishes with that throw, and this time able to hit the mark for the full 20. Stowaway again. Indeed. Scores again. This time it's 18, though. Manly. Oh, might have been going for glory there. But did get banished. Jody knocks back the defender and goes for the throw. Good for 12. Jody back with it here. Now it's the stowaway's turn. And she throws it in and gets the full 20. Jody to the stowaway. Stowaway speeds ahead and throws it in for another 20. And it is now possible for McCoss to take this with one more score. Unless Wisty has rekindling, which may be the case. But now Wisty has enough damage as well. But both players have a sap. Stowaway would not have enough damage for McCoss. It would need to be anyone else, potentially. But McCoss will still take that 20 damage there, because it is certainly much easier at this point, as just about any damage will do to remove what is at least Wisty's first life bar. As to whether there's a second, we will have to see, and after Wisty throws in for 14, Wisty also about to test that theory in what might be a sudden death match. But McCoss recovers, but does not ninja quickly enough. Manly against Manly! Goes for the throw, but it is rekindling, and it is 50 for Wisty. So a lot of life on the second life bar. Stowaway trying to cause some trouble. But Makos is the one doing the damage here. And it is possible already for Makos to finish this. If it is a full damage Jodariel plunge, except there goes Jodariel. Oh, and there is the rekindling... For Mikos, it's 10, but that's all that Mikos needed to at least survive that hit. One more score, though, potentially all that Wisty would need. Any exile would have enough, in Wisty's case. Stowaway does not have enough for Mikos, at least not to finish with one score. Perhaps Mikos isn't feeling that picky about it. Lady River. Throw is short, but with the rebound. Plunges in. For the win. GG. GG. Well played, you two. Thus end this night's proceedings. Well done. All right. Let's head on back. Until the next right. And let us know, chat, if there's anything we'd like to see for the next one. Koror is expressing interest in getting in if there's anyone who would like to swap out in the near future. I can swap out. Wisty is willing to swap out, it sounds like. Stay up on longer. I don't mind swapping out if you still want to play. I'm, I'm like, hungry and I'm probably going to make dinner. Oh, so. okay. Fair enough. Fair enough, yep. Uh, do you want to do one more before you make the switch, Wisty, or...? Yeah, sure. Okay. 
All right, in that case, if there is anything we would like to see between Wisty and Mikos before we have Wisty switch out, then let us know. <laughs> Mikos is on the grind. Oh, well, Core comes in and says, all right, then. I'm going to turn Customize off. <laughs> Fair enough. Mikos is in the quest for the best. Anything else? We could still do an arena. We could still do a song. Otherwise, that customize off accounts for most of the things. Imp Arena. Oh, okay. A little more chaos while we're at it. Sure thing. Why not? Okay. In that case, now, let's get started. The chastity. All right, so what will we get this time? For Wisty, it is Demon, Sap, and Nomad. For Mikos, it is Demon, Nomad, and Worm. So actually somewhat similar, at least from an exile standpoint. Of course, other details may vary significantly. We've yet to confirm. Lacoste with the Jody and now Snadra. More banishment for Sandra. Here's a sacred bond from Lacoste. But seemingly not for Wisty. A vengeful vow on somebody. Lady River comes back, speeds ahead, and throws it in for 15 to get us started. There's a wall of imps blocking Mikos from getting the orb. Such is the way of things at times in this arena. As Wisty is trying to do it all with Manly, but comes up a little bit short as... Oh, Mikos, I think, was trying to go for a throw, but that might be a happy accident there. As has now discovered, hey, that worm has a little bit of extra damage when it comes to plunging. Jody banishes it. Oh, a few people, but then a double banishment from Snadra's cast here. That means Snadra can hop in for 20. And Mikos actually had extra starting power life, presumably from one of Jodariel's masteries. Oh, and Mikos looked like was in there with Lady River, but apparently stopped just short of the pyre. But I suppose rather than 23 damage from a Curfang Worm Plunge, Mikos will settle for 30 damage on a Jodariel Plunge. That leaves just Lady River back defensively against Manly. Manly trying to fake out Lady River, but can't quite make that happen. And Lady River comes back. It's back with Wisty and back with Snadra. She's stopped just short of the pyre, except now Wisty goes on a banishing spree and suddenly there's no one to stop Jodariel. Oh, but the sapling does get placed there. Looked like Mikos might have been quick enough to prevent it from happening. But he's able to bring people back by stepping on their portraits and puts that to good use here. Got close with Lady River, but not quite close enough. Snadra down. In fact, everyone down for Wisty right now. Mikos has that extra damage on Kerfang. And that drops Wisty down to just nine pyre life here. And somehow Jody did not get banished. And nearly found her way all the way through there. But now it is the opposing Jody for Wisty. Except that uh, Mikos gets rid of her. Now has Jody right in front of the pyre, except there is rekindling. So Wisty holds on with the second life bar. But at this point, one score for Mikos, we can confirm, would be sufficient, barring a very quick throw. Speaking of throws... Wisty gets rid of the orb to set up Jodariel for a banishment or two. But Mikos brings back some exiles with that sacred bond. The throw is short. Wisty on the counterattack, but not quick enough with Manly. As for Lady River, though, she is quick enough. GG. 
true night wings prevail. G G. And what a crushing victory it was. Well played, you two. Right. It's complete. All right. Well, let's head on back. Until the next right. And if it still works between Wisty and Core, we can make that swap now if we would like. Works for Core. Does that still work for you, Wisty? Alright. Thanks for stopping by. Good to have you. Now, let me get an invite here for Core. In the meantime, we'll just reset ourselves. Alright, and Core, if you could just confirm it looks like you're player one. It appears so. Okay. Let me just update your information. There we are. Okay. So let us know, chat, if there is anything we would like to see between Core and Mikos. Otherwise, of course, as always, we can leave it up to the players to take whatever they want. That works too. I may or may not have said that, yes. I'm allowed to occasionally switch a random word into Spanish. <laughs> fair enough fair enough all right well not seeing any requests for this one so i think we'll just leave it up to the players let's get started the pyre hearts shall now did i wait true night wings we had locked in this arena before, right? Did I reset it, or did we get... Yeah, it was random. It was random. Wow, that's the second time that's happened to us today. We've gotten same arena twice in a row, even after resetting. What was it? The book earlier where it happened? As Kor leads off with Gilman here. Extra casting assistance from the talisman. As Mikos will go speedy Bertrude. And all of a sudden I can't move. <laughs> uh, if you try pausing and unpausing, I does that work? Pause. Oh, that's not great. Um, shall we start with unplugging, replugging? Yeah, let me try that. Let's try that, yeah. There we go. We're back. We're, We're back. back. <laughs> oh, good one, Camilo. Good one. Messenger oh, Web Lanthorn Messenger in.
Crones prayer beads on a saluting Udmil, though we've seen a lot of Crones today, but I don't think we've had any saluting Crones yet, if I'm not mistaken. As it'll be power casting Snadra. Oh, hold on though. Hold on though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Saw the triple crone for a second. Made me wonder. It'll be Typhoon Bottle, and that is an interesting choice because the crones, as I think I was saying earlier, they do take a long time to come back from banishment, so that is a bit of an insurance policy from a cost in case they do all go down. Cost waiting for those reinforcements, and they come in now. And Macos is able to score here for 25 with one of those crones. Wall of imps in the middle of the arena. It looks like they blocked Macos a little bit more than they blocked Core. As Core, oh, picks off two with that Snatcher power cast, and after plunging with one of those crones, two was all that Macos had. So that means no one left back to defend against Snatcher, and once again, the imps are certainly interfering. Core unable to get the throw off in time, though. Cost stalls at least long enough to get one of those crones back, but loses that crone. Now, here is the value of that Typhoon bottle. Core the throw does have enough on it. It's a quick throw, though. Just five. And these imps. After this match, Mikos is going to file a petition against these imps. Wondering why they seem to be teaming up so deliberately against him, but everyone down. Dangerous portal for Kord nearly was enough to set him up even with that Typhoon bottle active. But Mikos, oh, nearly made it in there, but ultimately did get blocked and now banished from Snadra. Typhoon bottle active once again and already... Is proving its worth here for Macos. As once again, everyone down now. For what it's worth, the fastest exile while Typhoon Bottle or Numbing Gust is active is or any worm. So in that way, Core kind of has the closest thing you can have to a counter. As Core also plunges in there with Snadra. Stubborn Flame active though, reducing Core's damage by 10. And no prayer beads on Snatra, so now she is permanently gone in this round. Koss just quick enough to block that throw. Typhoon Bottle active, but Core gets the orb relatively close to Mikasa's pyre. And ultimately is able to get a throw off here, though once again it's just 5 damage because that Stubborn Flame, especially against a low damage exile like a worm, makes it really tough to get significant damage. That is the maximum, barring a uh, seized chance. And it also means that although Snadra has 50% leech when she scores, she's getting less value on that as well, courtesy of the, <laughs> the Stubborn Flame, which is absolutely paying off as well for Mikos. A well constructed team here, but all those crones are down, and with that portal as close as it was, still enough time for Core. So he's finding a way to make do. Core loops around and plunges in. That does mean he is now down one Gilman in this round, but Snadra. It's trying to make Macos down all of the crones. It's Macos, perhaps stalling a bit. Gets some reinforcements. Gets one and now a second, but lost the other crones in the process. So on net, still the same place he left off. And Snadra, still bold enough to plunge in here against that one defender. Force throw. Once again, all he can do is five. Because first the orb and plunges in here for 30. But at this point, Core has had enough time to leech back all the way up to full. Typhoon bottle active. Core uh, would set up a portal, except that he can't do anything. He can't implode with that imp. 
But Mikos, after banishing the Imp, does now create the portal that Core was looking for. And although it might appear as though Core had enough damage to finish it with one score, he didn't. At least not until that three damage there that actually is significant. Because now Snadra would have enough damage. But Makos does have that Crone Salute. Needs to be careful though, because after turning those eggs out, after banishing those Howlers, they can come back in their normal form. And Makos can only do that salute once. Four. Sets up a portal. Gets rid of, oh, the last of Makasa's crones. And, it is done. and Stubborn Flame may be active. The, the Typhoon Bottle may be active, but Core still able to get in for the winning score. The right is done. GG. Good game. Well played, you two. Let's head on back. All right, and let us know, chat, if there is anything we'd like to see for the next one. Otherwise, as always, we can just leave it up to the players, as I think was the case in that previous one, right? any requests though so I think we'll just get this next one started then oh the hearts I thought I heard a boat the true night would you look at that welcome who shall conduct the rites <laughs> maybe well I mean I would say so, but apparently some people <clears throat> are not fans of this boat. Exile. Core's favorite map. Right, that's why he's a member of the Pyre Hearts, isn't it? That's the reason. No. Because no, he loves this map so wrong. much You're getting it that all it inspired wrong, him. The Pyre Hearts love the water, okay? Which is why... They created a boat, so they can go out on the water. They created the boat, the Pyhards. Well... The, wor the worms created a boat. I guess they did, didn't they? Because it was... It was Auras, the Hulk of Auras, right? I guess they did. <laughs> My lore is wrong. <laughs> what, what, did he, what did he do? I wasn't paying attention. Look, look. The details, details, okay? Okay, as Kor does go with a Titan Tooth the Demon, and there have been times on the boat where Kor has... Um, that was not a Titan Tooth Demon. Oh, my apologies. It was a demon. There have been times, though, when Kor has not gone demon on the boat, despite it being the most often, or the most common, popular choice to capitalize on the boat magic. The boat is a Colosseum used... <laughs> That's torture for worms unworthy of water. And thus the battle of the spiral sanctum was born. Um leads actually that took place in the Commonwealth. True. Madly.
and now messenger imp with the web lanthorn and here we go we do have ourselves an unexpected bro boat right and uh, somewhat surprisingly only one person took a demon and it was Kor, the person who was uh, saying how he he's perhaps not the biggest fan of going demons on the boat as he switches in to Manly with a quick throw and all, but that still was not enough to get the throw off in time as Mikos was ready. Kor, though, Someone there. loses Zoxiana. Mikos, with Barker, down to the sapling. Oh, and well, that's why you like demons on the boat. Kor gets a little bit of extra air time there and gets a huge 48 damage on that plunge. Titan Tooth. Certainly doing its job with all the stuns. Good. Here is Kor. Trying to switch into another exile. Didn't have another exile though, so instead we'll just settle for plunging directly with the harp. Parker blocks, although he is still there. Dangerous position, though Core is in possession. Trying to set up that big brazen manor demon plunge, but McCoss did just enough to stop that from happening, because that would have been enough damage. What happened there? Everyone down on Core's side. Got that typhoon bottle or numbing gust though. Slowing McCoss down. At least until Bispalap made her return. Here she is. And there she goes. Orb in a little bit of a strange place there, seemingly in the water. But Makos is able to get it. Switches into Barker, who's able to plunge. His bluff switches in Owen, vanishes an exile or two, and gets in for the winning plunge. GG. They vastly outperformed their adversaries. Well played, you two. The right is complete. All right. Let's head on back. Until the next right. And let us know, chat, if there is anything we would like to see for the next one. That was just a random boat. It was not a request. Of course, that does happen every now and again. Imp Arena. Sure thing. We'll be heading back to the Isle of Kalimer then. Courtesy of Yakety Lilac. <laughs> Camilo was about to put his back on the boat. <laughs> no, the course is no, sir. All right, is there anything else we would like to add in addition to the arena, or is that all? <laughs> Meanwhile, Camilo and Core will have a staring contest in chat. Break it up! Break it up! Dread design. Okay. Dread design it is. And it seems like that might be all that we're looking for here. So let's get started. Time to let the true inhabitants of the Isle reclaim it. But we do still have time for an exile's request. Okay. There is a request for Double Savage here. Just in time, Double Savage. Who shall conduct? My rotor says these are the true inhabitants of the Isle. So are we saying it was originally the Savages and then the Imps here overtook the Isle from the Savages? I mean, it is the Rope Caller's arena, but did the Rope Caller actually 
displace the imps. So I feel like the imps were probably there before the rope collar. And then the imps ultimately took the aisle back. No worries, Camilo. Thanks for stopping by. Good to have you as always, and thanks for jumping in for the matches earlier. As Mikas goes exploding Gilman, Core led off with Volfred. Nutrition stick full fred at that. Will be a quick throwing stowaway in the second spot. Make that a quick throwing stowaway for Macos as well. Vanishing throws on Almer, so Kor has his two savages, and Makos will need the second one here. No love for Gareth, apparently. Tisk tisk. I'm so disappointed. As Kor throws it in for 12 with Wolfred. Volfred first to be banished here. Series of banishments, and that is often the case when you have a bunch of savages on both sides spamming the salute button. Or just trying to get into throwing range, and does. This time it's 18 damage. Oh! Okay, well there's the nutrition stick action for you. Extra range on the blink coming in handy for Core. Everyone down on Core's side though now, and that does slow the cost. Although, as we were saying earlier, technically speaking, Gilman, his base movement speed, is the uh, closest thing to a counter to that setup. Macoss able to intercept and very quickly counterattack. Plunging in here for 15 with that worm. Well timed on the salute from Macos, but same can be said for Core, and he's the one with the final product there, throwing it in for eight. Vanishing throw that time, except Core didn't need the banishment, as he got the damage out of it instead. Twenty from Almer there. This time, oh, Volfred intercepted from that range. I was not sure if that was going to be unblockable. And the quick, or well, the abbreviated throw from Core means he did not have enough damage there. He would here if it lands, and it does. GG. Well played, you two. Thus end this night's proceedings. And now, let's head on back. Until the stars align. All right, and let us know, chat, if there's anything we'd like to see for the next one. That was Dread Design plus Isle of Kalimer for that one, but we left the... Oh, and also Double Savages, and we did not leave the squad selection entirely up to the players here. So we actually had a lot of stuff in that one. Get to take a break after this next one if someone else wants to get in. Okay, thanks for the heads up. So if there is anyone in chat who is interested in jumping in, Macos will need to swap out. Do we have any takers? I mean, it is... It's getting a little bit late. It would perhaps be a little preemptive for us to say only one more match. Okay, good, good, good. We can get an aura in after this. Gotcha. All right, so in that case, sounds like this will be the last one between Core and Makos. And then we can at least try to get an aura in. All right, well, <laughs> we'll give it a shot then, I suppose. No worries, Iroder. No worries. 
looks like we'll we'll try to get a nor in after this so let us know if there is anything we still want to see between core and Makos. so this will likely be our last time with these two matching up today but not immediately seeing any such requests so it looks like we'll just lead this one up to the players Back at the Glade of Leeu. Welcome. Who shall conduct the rites? But no requests, so up to the players to go with whatever they want here. And in Cora's case, that means an exploding Gilman. Back to the ninja stowaway. As core will go speedy Jodariel. Now Typhoon Bottle on Manly in the second spot for McCoss. Oh. Oh. Well, it's uh, it's canned singularity on the stowaway. It's not quite Core's usual setup with that, as he would typically pair it with a Sacred Bond Nomad caught me a little off guard in that way, but it is the cost now rounding out the squad with Ignarius. Here is the stowaway. She jumps into the opposing aura, activating the false step, and while that is in process, Kor activates the stunning claim on Gilman, stunning everyone except for the stowaway, giving her a free waltz into the pyre. That time a much more straightforward worm throw, but with C's chance active, Kor gets some bonus value on it. Because, oh, with a black magic jump there, changed direction about three times. Ultimately, is able to get the throw off there from the corner. Good for 20. Still away. Locked. Oh, big banishment from that cast from Jody takes out the entirety of Makasa's team, so she'll just waltz on in. It does mean she is now gone in this round for four. Gilman comes back. Core waiting for the stowaway to make her return. Now here she is. Into the aura she goes, and Core, oh, did not do the stunning claim that time. There it is. And had just enough time with the combo to get the jump in there. For a second, looked like Lacoste might have had enough time to recover defensively, but now, huge implosion, getting rid of all of Lacoste's exiles, and just enough time for Core to plunge, this time with Jody. And that drops Lacoste down to just 10 Pyrelight does have Manly, and I believe took that Typhoon bottle on Manly, which presumably was because went on the other side for the maximum rekindling from the Masteries. Which is to say, I suspect the Macos has quite a bit of Pyre life post-rekindling. Four slowed and eventually stopped. 
way down. And Iggy creates enough space for a 30 damage plunge there. Oh, Camilo, that was a, a quick stop to the store. Oh, and Kor <laughs> went rings around uh, Mikasa's character there, but didn't actually get the banishment, at least not initially. But now, once again, the Typhoon bottle slowing Kor, but he does enough time. It's only 10 rekindling. I was expecting 50. Means Mikasa is still holding on, but one score is likely all that Kor would need here. Could this be the moment Kor was looking for? Not quite. The throw is short. Mikasa recovers, although loses Ignarius in that exchange. Stowaway does come back, as does Manly. Oh, and Kor couldn't quite make it happen with the Stowaway, at least not on that occasion. Looked like he was going to go for the, the combo. But Stowaway close enough to the player that even with that Typhoon bottle, able to plunge in to take the win. Done this time, I must admit. Good game. GG. The ceremony is complete. Well played, you two. All right, and Mikasa, you were saying you want to swap out? Yeah, I can uh, break out for a bit. All right, no worries. Well, thanks for stopping by, and good to have you in. Always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. All right, let me see. I can, if it helps, I can free you from remote play. If I remember what the hotkey is. There we go. Whatcha? Go now. Be free! Okay. And we were saying that we might try to get Anor in here. Does that still work for you, Anor? Freed from the wonky chains of remote play? Exactly. Still works for you? Awesome. All right, let me get you an invite. Should be on its way. And I suppose in the meantime, chat, if there is anything we would like to see, between Anor and Kor, let us know, and Anor, now that you appear to be in, let's just confirm who is player one and who is player two. Looks like that's still Kor player one, Anor player two. You gonna go normal Nightwings or true Nightwings tonight, Anor? True Nightwings, okay. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Mikasa. You had a bunch of matches where it was a one-score game. Alright, not so oh, let me I don't have to update your triumvirate, but I should update your name. I'm stronger in chat anyway. It's where Mikas generates his true power. Ooh, okay, hold on, let's see. We have an Exiles request. It's okay to go three at a time. Yeah, for sure. The Stowaway, Almer, and Tizo. Stowaway, Almer, and Tizo are the three Exiles for this one. Let us know if there's anything else we're looking for to combine with that, but the exiles are all locked in here. <laughs> True. You could spell it that way. Or the reason why I refer to her always as the stowaway is precisely because of that. So that we do not get into that debate every single time. <laughs> because we did every time at the beginning, and I was like, alright. We cannot spend half an hour having this conversation every single time we play multiplayer pirates. Shall now face the true Nightwings. Welcome. Who 
shall conduct the rites. So we know the players will have exactly the same exiles. But of course, masteries, talismans, and uh, even the, the position in which they select those exiles may differ. As core leads within a ring on Almer. <laughs> right, Mikas? As it'll be a quick throwing stowaway in the first spot for Anor. Web Lanthorn Super Portal Tizo for Core. Web Lanthorn Tizo for Anor. There is the other ring for Core on the stowaway. even an option? I don't remember. Alma. Prayer beads on Almer is how Nor will set him up. Alright. Now Core has that infinite stamina at the very beginning of the rounds, but then it does expire. I suppose it's not all that infinite after all, but he throws that one in for 16. But unable to get that throw off in time. Zenor, oh, practically got in there with Tizo. I believe now has, yes, a very dangerous portal. Uses that to actually banish Kor's exiles. But Kor does get the orb back here. And Zenor, deliberately, oh, tried to sidestep, didn't want to see that Tizo get banished because it would reset her portal position and I think Tizo got banished just before she went through the portal so uh, it was a difference between ending up right next to Kor's pyre and ending up right next to her pyre and uh, speaking of dangerous portal positions Kor able to use his to set up a 20 damage plunge Gonna follow up with Almer there, although did get banished in the process. A rude predicament for the pyre Anor, an opportunity here, poor defenseless. So she has time to throw this one in for the full 20 damage. And perhaps looking to do so again with the stowaway, but not enough time on that occasion to make it happen. Poor through the portal. Gets infinite stamina from that as well. And that helps him get in for a 20 damage plunge. Means no stowaway in this round, and that means more room for Anor, making it easier for her to throw that one in. Oh, and Anor's Tizo on a banishing spree here does eventually go down, though. Anor first to recover the orb, but banished before she can do anything with it. Oh, how about that for a black magic jump? As Kor zigs and zags mid-air around the defense and in. That one uh, a little less dramatic as the jump doesn't directly go in, but after a few steps to the side, Kor gets the 20 damage plunge, and at this point one score potentially all Kor would need, and that could have been it just then. But Anor makes the stop. Her portal does not take her far, certainly not far enough to avoid getting banished there, and not far enough for her to avoid 
getting defenseless, losing all of her exiles, and so Kor able to throw that one in to decide the match. Again. GG. Well played, you two. Let's head on back. Until the next right. That one was two savages and an imp, specifically the stowaway, Almer, and Tizo. But let us know if there's anything we would like to see for the next one. Not immediately seeing anything though. Let us know if there is anything we're looking for here. Otherwise, we'll just leave it up to the players. And Anor comes in and says, uh, don't mind if I do. I'll just turn customize off real quick. All right, fair enough. That certainly, <laughs> that certainly changes things. Could do an arena, could do a song. <laughs> Camila, were you about to do the same thing? McCall says Flutterfly. Okay. We now have a song as well. Let's see if there that infuses any extra imp energy into our customize off match. Okay, it seems like that will be all though. Oh, except Oh, do I know? I mean, I have a, I have an idea. I have an idea. Might it be perhaps this? No, no, he's using Kalmer. He's using the Imp Arena. It's Flutterfly, yeah. Yeah, no, he's saying, no, no, no. He's saying Flutterfly because it's the Imp Arena. Yeah, but yeah, it's that one. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, I see, I see. Actually, Amen. though, I'm surprised because uh, McCoss had no. at least one right earlier today where I am convinced that the imps conspired against him. They would not stop blocking him. So I'm surprised no, that McCoss no, no. is now no, siding you, with you, the imps after all that. No, I think you misunderstood what happened in the right. No, the, the imps were hugging him. He's, he's feeling a lot of love. So he wants to go back there. <laughs> Apparently, no resentment. I'm a little surprised. I'm a little surprised. Did not expect that. All right, well, fair enough. We'll get this one started then. Give Anor a worm. Give Anor a worm. Anor has been using worms more often as of late, even without requests. As Kor has Savage Nomad Imp, Anor has Nomad Harp Kerr. What? Notably, was that two Nomads jumping into each other and neither one having Shoulder Smash? Because that's a little bit surprising. Don't see that too often. The Kor able to throw that one in for 20. And we finally have a Gareth sighting. After all this time, seeing all of these Savages, and having one player be the true Nightwings for the entire night tonight, and yet for some reason, only now do we finally get a Gareth sighting. After all these fake Gareths, at last we have the real deal. Hamitha brings back a teammate. Although, it looked like she was more keen on doing it all herself there, as, as Kor uh, has extra damage for what it's worth from the Astral Eye as he plunges with Headwind, but now Headwind is gone. It was uh, courtesy of a dangerous portal that admittedly I did not even see was there. Now, Nor also has Headwind, and he will also do the plunging. Now he is gone in this round for Anor. That leaves just Barker back defensively. That is typically not what he is best at doing. 
So he is unable to stop Headwind, and once again, Core getting the value from that Astral Eye, the extra 8 damage at the cost of reduced hope. And the Curse Jump, Core curves around the defense and in for the deciding score. Yet burns with vigor and resolve. GG. The right having snap casts is, is so difficult. <laughs> All right. Oh, and look at that. It was Gareth. It was meant to be. It was meant to be. Until the next right. All right. Well, let us know, chat, if there's anything you'd like to see for the next one. We had a lot of stuff on that one. Customize off. Isle of Kalimur, Flutterfly. We'll reset that stuff unless, of course, there's anything else you guys want for this one. <laughs> that may be, Wisty. That may be. Not immediately seeing any requests, though. Let us know if there's if there is anything we're looking for here. Otherwise, we can leave it up to the players. But it seems like uh, that may be what we end up with here. So we'll get started. Okay, so up to the players to take whatever they'd like here. Is this our first Spring of Jomir? We'd gone certainly a long time without a Spring. So we had a lot of repeats between Isle of Kalimur, the boat. I think this was the odd arena out for a while. There's a chance we've not yet seen it today. As Korg... Did, did you get four Masteries? Wait, is there a request? Oh, you did, you did. No, I just, I thought you clicked too quickly and only got three oh, for a second there. no. <laughs> okay. As a nor will lead... Web Lanthorn Tizo. Cole Snadra for the extra starting pyre life on Core's end. Oh, when Anor breaks out the speedy Volfred. Look out. ultimately settles on an exploding deluge.
As an or, we'll go Prayer Beads, Rookie. Oh, and it, I was about to say big fell swoop, but nothing came of it except was at the last second of banishment there. As a core then sneaks in for a 13 damage throw from his worm. Tizo, back to Rookie, Rookie through the portal. He's blocked though. And then I think both the worm and Rookie got banished in that exchange. Rookie back though. Through the portal, gets the infinite stamina, and goes under the defense. That time, a little reverse psychology. As he plunges, and with prayer beats, he is already back. And now, with a dangerous portal, Anor looks to go through, except Kor in position. Now it's Kor moving in, but Deluge is down. Anor's portal not nearly as threatening as it once was but does still give that stamina. Four has enough time to throw, oh, just for 11 with Snadra. There's the fell swoop you come to expect of those types of harps. Rookie, oh, very sneaky. He was going in, then he backed away, and then he actually went in for real. Amitha looks to set up the fell swoop, but with the courtesy of the sap shield, it's not particularly effective. And that throw from Kor had just enough on it, with the full 15 damage. Amitha cuts the throw a little bit short there, 15. Anor flies over the cast, and Tizo gets a banishment in the process. And so Tizo was thinking about going in there, but at the very least sets up Dangerous Portal, though Kor does have a couple of exiles next to Anor's Pyre. Oh, and Anor was about to try to use that portal, only for it to be reset just before she could do so. And Kor wins the orb back next to her Pyre, is able to throw that one in quickly as well. Harp Push says, get away from here, you, you silly sap. I have important business to attend to. And Volfred stepped aside, and Pamitha plunged. Volfred sidestepping that time. Not that time, though. So Snadra recovers, gives it up to Deluge. Deluge's throw is worth 15 damage. That drops an ore down to three. Now she does have a sap. I do not recall how much rekindling she might have here. That may be a theory that Kor is about to test as he does plunge, but Anor holds on its 10 on the second life bar. So at this point, one score potentially all Kor would need. Any of his exiles would be capable of doing it. Anor once again around the world with Ruki. But it is Kor who gets the deciding score. GG. Did not even come close. Well played, you two. The right is yeah. ended. <laughs> All right, let's head on back. Until the stars align. I can maybe do one or two more, and if someone wants to jump in versus okay. more. Okay. Yeah, it is getting late enough at this point that we could make this next one our penultimate right, and then go. Liberation right after that. So I know we've had at least a few... We've gotten a lot of people in today, which is great, but I know we've had at least a, one or two people who have said they're not looking to get in, so I'm not sure at this stage if we'd have anyone else. So if this is our penultimate right, then that would mean this would be our last chance to get someone... or to do a specific request... <laughs> Twitch bugging out for you, Anor. Okay. Well, saw that one at least. So, uh, yeah, I think, assuming that this will be our second to last right, Wisty could potentially hop back in if anyone wants to keep going.
but you already played, so no big deal either way. All right. Well, I appreciate your flexibility. Admittedly, I also have not eaten yet, so... <laughs> uh, want to go too much later, but we could go a little bit. Camilo could as well? Okay. Did we... And did Camilo and Wisty play each other? Or no, I think it was... Uh, they swapped out for his... Right. I think it was Mikas and Wisty, right? And Mikas and Camilo. So I don't think we got that matchup before. So we could potentially do that for a little bit. All right, in that case, how does this sound? What if we do one more here between Kor and Anor? So if there's anything we want to see there, let's make that happen now for this one. And then afterward, it sounds like we might be able to get Wisty and Camilo in for a little bit. Because they both played today, but they did not play each other. And it's been a little while, so maybe we get them back in and we m we'll probably go into Liberation Rite pretty soon once we get Camilo and Wisty back in. But that way we can, we can uh, do a few different things before we wrap things up in full. Alright, so is there anything else we would like to see between Kor and Anor, or do we just want to leave this last one between these two up to the players to take whatever they want here? Oh, okay. Anor says only two masteries for this next match. Only two. And that's it from her? Okay. So does anyone else want to build off that idea, or is that enough? Knights of the Sea. Okay. Sure. Seems like that might be it. So let's get going. Okay, we're back at the nest. The true night wings. Welcome. And with only two masteries, we right. we'll have to see how that influences the squad selection here. This is not usually a decision that the players have to make. A little unnatural, at least in multiplayer pyre, to be limited to just two masteries. Core will go Ignarius. Nor goes for the savage salute on the stowaway. Extra starting pyre life on Snadra. Banishing throws for Rookie. Last choice for Core is an exploding Gilman.
and Anor will finish with a Titan Tooth Hamatha. And there is that savage salute, Anor getting first to the orb, and with that bright wisp, will pass the orb back when the stowaway gets banished. The core got the orb back and was able to plunge in there for 30 with Ignarius. Stowaway teleports back to the orb and was right next to the pyre, so able to walk that one in. But did not have prayer beats, so she's out. And uh, Ruki was sent far off into the corner after being knocked away by Ignarius. Hamatha. Who tries to hard push in. It nearly worked, but came up just a little bit short. Gilman. Oh, banishes the entirety of Anor's team. And that leaves enough time for Ignarius to fully charge that throw. Stowaway got there first, but got knocked away. And tried to teleport again, but Ignarius said no. Vanishing throw from Ruki. Pain off there. And just enough from Ruki to make it in there. Saw him do the extra hops, but did not have a lot of momentum. So it looked like he was just skipping rope in front of the pyre. Oh, Gilman. Elusive there, but does eventually just end up in the lava. Not until... At least not until he had given it up to Ignarius, though, and Ignarius is able to throw it in for 22. And now at this point, it is possible for Core to get enough damage. Would need to be either Snadra or Ignarius. And Anor is not done, of course, as she'll plunge in for 20 here from Pamatha. Stowaway stunned and lost the orb. That leaves just Gilman back defense, or rather, just Ruki back defensively, and that is not something he's typically the best suited for doing. As Kor is, uh, taunting Anor, making it unclear which exile he was going to make the move with, but Anor, now the one on the attack, and with that banishing throw, able to set up a 15 damage Kur throw. Stowaway teleports to the orb. Oh, but Core anticipated what direction Anor was going in. And with that knowledge, banished the entirety of Anor's team, setting up the winning plunge. GG. Well played, you two. The right is complete. Thanks for stopping by. Good to have you both. Until the next round. And if it still works for Wisty and Camilo, perhaps we can get you back in for a bit here. Because we, although we have seen Camilo and we have seen Wisty today, we have not seen them face off against each other. So let's see if we can make that happen. Let's see. Milo, and now Wisty. Invites should be sent. In the meantime, I'll reset the song and I'll reset the number of masteries. Okay. Looks like we have you both back in here. Okay, let me just update your information. And no more Pyre Hearts. We're going Fate. No more True Night Wings. We're going Chastity. And this is no longer a nor. There we go. All right. So let us know, chat, if there's anything we'd like to see between these two. As I was saying, both of these people have played earlier today, so they've had their warm-ups. 
they're ready for whatever you want to throw at them. And I think, given the time, we probably won't wait long before we get into our liberation rite. So maybe we'll just give these two one or two matches and then, then we'll go into the big one. Not seeing any requests though. So I guess we'll just leave this one up to the players. Oh, uh, Camilo, did you want to be on controller or did you want to be keyboard mouse? Um, I'm gonna try controller, why not? Okay, gotcha. Just for. Let we'll me test plug it. it. In. Oh, I hear water. I think the that's the fall. That is the fall. Okay, this is not the liberation right. I know I was saying we might do a liberation right soon, but who knows? Maybe this is our quick little practice run. The right. Does it detect the controller? <laughs> uh. It's not working? Nah, but I, I don't know if it's detecting the thing. Let me check. check yeah, it. let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, theoretically, yes. But let's... Let's mess with some of the settings. How about now? Nope. Oh, that's something. That's, that's me. <laughs> that's Wisty? Yes. Oh, well, I mean, Remote Play did say Wisty is player one. If you want me, I can play in just in queue. We don't want to deal with this. Hold on. It can be done. Maybe. Hopefully. Possibly. If Wisty was player one when on controller one, surely that means if we put Camilo oh, on that makes spot. Sense. Right, right? I mean, you would think, except sometimes <laughs> remote play does not follow any logic whatsoever. Edwin. Okay, is this the right one for Wisty though? No. No. Okay, the guessing game continues. Surely it wouldn't actually be player one is player one and player two is player player two, right? That never happens. No. Okay, I, I, we had to check, but I was highly doubtful. <laughs> okay, what about now? No. What if you press the pause button? No. I did pause it, and now I control No! <laughs> now Camilo <laughs> controls both teams. That's not what was supposed to happen. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Um, well, in that case, I, the simple solution probably is, Camilo, if you go back to yeah. keyboard mouse. Yeah, I'm cured, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, Camilo was going to test out going on controller, but uh, apparently his controller Never is all mind. powerful and uh, controls both teams simultaneously. Too much power. Can you choose Wisty? Okay, yeah, let's see now. Wisty, does it work? No. Okay, hold on. Let's make you player two. <laughs> Was that you, Wisty? I can pause. I cannot do anything else. Player three! Watch you be player one. Honestly, it, it's, it's happened. It wouldn't be that crazy. <laughs> it wouldn't be that crazy, I'm just saying, for, for player two to be player one on remote play. It has happened before. It would help if remote play allowed me to do that. What about now? Yeah, uh, we're good. yeah. obviously, player two is player one. Two plus two equals five. Oh. It's Gareth! Gareth. But he's not even wearing his proper raiments. Spend all this time with multiple people playing as the true Nightwings, and only now that we have someone switch off the true Nightwings, does that person actually take Gareth? I'm crushed. Destroyed. Right. 
prayer beads on Bertrude. I'll admit I perhaps was distracted by the remote play settings and did not take particular notice of what people were setting up. But this will be a nutrition stick full Fred in the last spot for Camilo. I have to pause and unpause each time. Just Usually you know. that's fine once the match actually starts, but let me know if there's still an issue once we do. Yeah. You don't have to pause every time you move. Wisty finishes with a meta Vizpaleth. Uh, oh, I can't. Oh, is someone controlling the wrong I am, team? I am yeah. player one now. Uh, remote yeah, play. Uh, all right. Tell you what. Let's, uh, hold on just a second. Let's see here. Hmm. We can always continue this song and dance of changing which controller Wisty is set for on remote play. That is one option. I don't... Is that Wisty controlling the fate? I no. believe so. I'm not touching nothing. What? what? I, I'm also I cannot, not I cannot, I cannot move now. It happened the book that the other Oh wait, this happened... This is the thing that happened to you last week, right Camilo? Yeah. And for some reason, it's a spamming shift with... <laughs> is that... Weird. Is it even the deck that I'm... Yeah. Yeah, I think... Why don't we... Why don't we... Exit versus mode for a second. Let's restart this match. I think, I think at I'm the pretty... very least. Is probably a good idea. Mm -hmm. Maybe... Now that... Because we were... I mean, we were messing with... Plugging and unplugging controllers, changing between controller and uh, keyboard mouse mid match, and that might have gotten Pyre a little bit confused. So now we initiate from the onset with one person on keyboard mouse, another person on controller. Wisty, if you use your bumpers, out of curiosity, which. Nothing. nothing. Okay, that does not bode well. That's not nice. That is, that is supposed to do a thing. What about now? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Let's... Let's... Let's try it now. <laughs> Nobody touch anything! <laughs> the fate shall now face the chastity. Okay. Welcome. Saw him again. So, I mean, up to you guys. If you want to go with exactly the same setups, of course you can. If you want to mix it up, I suppose. There's nothing stopping you. Alright, so Banishing Throws, Gareth. We saw the Bullfred in this first spot for Camilo. Followed by a prayer beads stowaway. Prayer beads Bertrude. Casting Headwind in the last spot for Camilo. And then we had the Meta Vizpaleth last time, but the setup is not the question. The question is who is controlling who? I think it's working. It's working! We're good. Knock on wood. Alright. First try. All right, that's a couple of big casts there from Hedwin. He gets the orb back and is able to throw that one in as well. Cuts it a little bit short there, 14. Gareth, first to the orb. And Gareth, able to throw, 
Good for 11. Gareth, this time... Uh, oh, actually does emerge from that exchange. Only to be banished soon thereafter, of course. Edwin. Just barely avoids getting banished. Drops the orb. Wisty. Reclaims only to be shoulder smashed. And now the stowaway. Jumps in for Camilo and I think she had prayer beads. Yep, she did. Is Paulette. Has the Celestial Spike vanishing throws and demonstrates them right there, but does go down. Oh, and Gareth. Shoulder smashed there. Edwin. One Nomad army at the moment. And finishes the job. Throwing that one in for 20. After banishing the entirety of Wisty's team. Camilo <laughs> blinks to the other side of the pyre. Nothing personnel, kid, but... Wisty, able to stop it. Now, Gareth over to Bertrude. Hiding behind the barrier. Covering some stamina, waiting for the right moment. Oh, and nearly had it. But Camilo made the stop. And is now perhaps looking to repeat what he did before with Hedwin, but it won't happen this time. Celestial Spike from Vizpaleth doing some work. As Vizpaleth now trying to do her best headwind impression and may not be able to finish the job, but Gareth will, as he throws it in for 11. Gareth, once again here, and might have gone down, but got the throw off in time. Cuts it short though, just 7. Vanishes one with the throw, but then does go down. Edwin trying to get rid of the orb so he can do a cast to clear out some room, but Wissy says, ah, don't mind me, I'll just take this whole orb thing. Gets it back after it conveniently landed right next to Bertrude, but Bertrude is banished. Gareth, though, he lands in one of those auras. Still away for Camilo. Tries to switch the side, but Wisty able to shift over. Big power cast from Headwind, though. Oh, and then the stowaway teleports to the orb, and Wisty does not have anyone back to stop her. Wisty teleports, though, with Gareth. And then gets rid of a defender with Vispaleth, but has a lot of ground to cover, and Vispaleth goes down. And Gareth was about to return, but the stowaway teleported to the orb and plunged in there, dropping Wisty down to just six. So at this point, perhaps one score, all that Camilo might need. Here is Wisty with Bertrude. Bertrude goes down, though. Oh, and somehow, Gareth, at least momentarily, able to retrieve the orb, even when it was seemingly within the confines of that sapling. Oh, and Camilo nearly walked that one in! For a clinching sap plunge. But Wisty was not going to let that happen. Oops. And Wisty, if she had the stamina, might have been able to get the crone plunge, but does get it there. And now Wisty just a couple of scores away, potentially. Depending on who it is who does them. And that was not a full damage score, although it is still possible. If it is Vizpaleth or Bertrude. Of course, remains the case that one score would be all that Camilo would need. Bertrude. Cut off here, but still has it. Leaps over the sapling, but can't get past the sap. Camilo. Might have been thinking about going in for the blink, but Wisty saw it coming. Except Camilo hops GG. straight in. GG. Well played, you two. Thus end this night's proceedings. <laughs> oh. 
Well, well, I mean, Gareth may not have won on that occasion, but, you know, he won in our hearts. <laughs> Definitely. All right, well, it's getting late enough that I think we might just be heading straight back to the Fall of Solium. We perhaps just had our, our warm-up, our practice run for the Liberation Rite, but that was, that was not the real deal. That was just a friendly... A friendly yeah, this one this one is the actual liberation right uh, my prediction for the liberation right is that one of the exiles on one of the teams is going to get liberated I never seen so much wise words coming for someone <laughs> watch the game crash or something like that no one actually wins and that doesn't end up happening <laughs> like, oh, I'm sorry guys I guess not I was wrong. <laughs> All right. Well, we will be headed to the Fall of Solium for our final ride of the night, our liberation rites. No requests from chat for this one. Both players are going to just pick their own teams to finish things off in style. So we will be at the Fall of Solium. We will be doing the Chastity version of Never to Return, which is not one that we hear very often at all, uh, whether it be liberation right or outside of liberation rites. We don't have a lot of Chastity yeah. players nowadays, Hell I suppose. Yeah. All right. Just ignoring what Cor said. But if both of you are ready, let's get it started. Good evening, exiles. Welcome to the fall of Solium. The fall. Here, one of you may walk the path to glory. We soon shall see who is the most deserving. The fate stand ready. The chastity stand prepared. I haven't now played a normal sub. Well, as we were saying, this will be our final run of the night, our liberation oh, rights. No requests from chat. Both players just picking their preferred teams to finish things off with style. And uh, that is a quick throwing Volfred in the first spot for Camilo. Answered by a Prayer Beads Tamitha on Wisty's end. goes Speedy Tizo. Misty goes with a super portal web lanthorn, Raji. Last choice for Camilo is an exploding Gilman. Wisty had the same idea for Lady River. All right, here we go. Our final right of the night, our liberation right. Camilo on the left representing the fate, and Wisty on the right representing the chastity. Best of luck to you both.
Ну-ка. GG. GG. And there it is. GG. An outcome which left little room for doubt. Well played, you two. Thus ends the liberation right. That was our liberation right, our final right of the night. So thank you everybody who participated in the rights today and everybody who gave us the requests in chat as well. I am going to hop out of Discord, but I will catch you guys next time. Alright, let me just throw this screen on here. As we were saying, that was our final rather night, our liberation rights, so thank you everybody who participated and gave us the requests for all of those rights. This was, of course, uh, Pyre Community Right Night, and if you're interested in getting more involved in multiplayer Pyre, then the best way to do so is by joining the Right Club Discord server, which you can do by clicking on that link right there. My name is Lids. I'm hosting these Right Nights. My streaming schedule is Fridays. We are doing Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer. Saturdays, Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. Then Sundays, obviously, Pyre multiplayer. Then... Recently, what with the release of The First Descendant, a new action RPG looter shooter co-op MMO, looking to squeeze in some times to either stream that or post videos for that straight to YouTube. So Lids Vids on YouTube as well, posting the VODs for all those streams, in addition to some things from The First Descendant, Hades 2, Helldivers 2, lots of stuff going on nowadays and if you haven't done so yet already of course you can also hit the follow button to get a notification for when i go live and you can also follow me on twitter at lids vids i post there on a live as well but actually the best place to stay up to date on all things lids especially when there are as many things going on as there currently are is by joining my discord which you can do by clicking on that link right there but that's going to be it for me for tonight, so thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed the stream, and I'll catch you next time.